So hi, so it's uh, Ken again. It's Ken again. So today we're gonna to do some more Qigong. We're gonna do some Qigong uh, specifically working on the this area around here. The, the Chinese call the, the Yao. It always translates to the waist, but it's not, it's more than the waist. It's this uh, whole area between the bottom of the solar plexus and the top of the knees. Specifically, we're gonna be working with the uh, the, the Kua and the, the Wei Lu here, the Kua and the Wei Lu. So the sacrum and the uh, inguinal crease and hip area here. So we're standing in quite a narrow stance. So you have about one length of your feet in between your feet, uh, for starters. Head is if suspended from above. Imagine we have that long ponytail on the top of the head that's tied up to the rafters. Pelvic area is tilted forwards. Feels like it's hanging down from that suspension from above. So again, we're going to be really working on this area here, this area that we call the, the Yao. Uh, this, uh, the, the Yao is always translated as the waist, but it's more than the waist. The Yao is this whole area here between, uh, between the bottom of the solar plexus and the top of the knees, here, or just the, the bottom of the thighs. Okay, as always, working to your capabilities, okay? and try to follow the safety instruction I give as we go along through this. Done correctly, this these set of exercises will really strengthen uh, this whole area, especially the lower back, and really open up what's called the Hmong Men point in your lower back, or the gate of your fate, when acupressure point really helps to raise your vitality. Done incorrectly, you can put unnecess unnecessary pressure onto the, onto the lumbar section of the, the spine, uh, the rectospinal muscles in the lower back. Okay, so really be careful, okay? Follow the safety instructions. We're mainly going to be breathing in and out through the nose, but there will be one instance as we breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, but I will explain that as we get to it. But I'm, I'm just starting to waffle. Let's, so let's get, oh, pardon, let's get, let's get into this session. Okay, so standing, nice and erect. Keep a small gap underneath each armpit as if cradling a small bird's egg or a small grape underneath each arm. Relaxing your arms down your, by your side with this feeling. And I just want you to breathe in through the nose this area around here, breathing into the to lower abdomen, into the lower back, breathing into this whole area around here. This area expanding with the in-breath, contracting with the out-breath. Okay, so I just want you to interlace your fingers, breathing in, stretching up, stretching up, and breathing out, just lowering down. Make sure as you stretch up that you don't uh, stick your lower ribs out or curving in the lower back. Keep the pelvic area tilted forwards. Breathing in. Stretching up. And breathing out, coming down. Okay. So glide a little bit wider. About, uh, about your shoulder width, hip distance apart. And we're gonna be we're gonna be pivoting from the hip area here. From the hip area here. Make sure you're not just of doing this with the, the belly and the, the lower back. You're not just sticking the belly out and curving in the lower back. You're pivoting from the hips here. I just want you to breathe in. We're going to breathe in and in through the nose and out through the mouth in this one. So breathing in, raise your hands up and just lean backwards ever so slightly. And breathing out, lower your arms down, lean forwards. Breathing in through the nose and backwards so you're not curving in the lower back here. Breathing out through the mouth, going forward. Just rocking here, breathing in. So you're pivoting on the hips and the bottom socket. Really feel kind of like you're, you're throwing the, the sacrum area, the sacrum area forwards here, and without curving in the lower back or flowing out the lower ribs. Breathing in. So pivoting at the hips. And breathing out. Really engaging the hips. Pivoting at the hips, but the movement is pretty much coming from your center and from uh, the, the sacrum or the sacral lap joint. So breathing in. Feet are staying flat on the floor, breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Make sure the hips aren't excessively tensing here. So you're just pivoting there. You want freedom of movement through the, the hip area here. Breathing in. Breathing in. It's really relaxing the hips. In a previous film, I talked about the, uh, the Wei Lu, which is the sacrum, the sacral joint, uh, the bottom of the spine, joined up with the pelvis and the, and the coccyx. This area should be yang, so substantial. And the, the hips, the core area here should be in, so insubstantial. Breathing in. And breathing out. Make sure you're not curving your lower back, you're not flaring the lower ribs out. Hips are soft, yin, and fitting in the hips. your core, your deep frontal line. I 
I'm not just instinct instinctively going to breathing in and out through the nose. That's my comes from my Tai Chi practice. So it doesn't matter if you do that. yourself to a, a, a narrower stance, about one length of your feet in between your feet. And I just want you to, I want you to turn the, I'll turn my left toes out to the side, you can mirror me here if you want to, turn the left toes out to the side, so they're like, add a, like a 45 degree angle to your, to your right foot. And just slide the, the drop the weight onto the left foot, or to the, to the foot you just turned out to the side, and slide the foot forward so that the heel is in line with the, the instep, the, the, the spot. Nice and upright. And I just want you to keep the feet flat on the floor. I just want you to incline forwards again from the hips. Inclining forwards from the hips. Make sure the, the lower back doesn't curve in, uh, the ribs don't flare out. And from the hips again, pu pushing the tailbone forwards and just put it back on the hips and sit down into the posture. Sit down. So engaging your core. You should feel any pressure that you were feeling on the lower back, you should feel that release as you sit down to this posture, sitting down to the thighs. And I just want you to sink down into the legs. Sink down, looking straight down, and the, the knee of this front foot should be obscuring the toes. In this position should be obscuring the, the toes. Which if you if, if you are a Tai Chi person, you'll say, no, you should be able to see the, the toes over, uh, the knee shouldn't go any further forward than the toes. And this this is Qigong, okay? It's not, it's not Tai Chi, this is Qigong. But be careful, of course, if you do have any problems with your knees. As always, kind of listen to your body's pain. A kind of pain, if it's not growth pain, it's kind of any other pain should be kind of a, paid attention to it so it could be uh, an indication that you're doing things incorrectly but you know muscles burning uh, it kind of is a, a growth pain okay hands onto your thighs and again from the hips I want you to incline forwards and the hands slide down your thighs make sure the lower back isn't curving in uh, the ribs aren't flaring out the chest isn't sticking out the head isn't long forward you're not bowing the upper back nice keeping a nice straight spine until the hands are just above the knees at the bottom of the thighs here I'm going to slide this this my left leg on my left, my left hand up, and put it onto this uh, the inguinal crease area here. Okay, and we're just gonna rock forwards and backwards. As you rock forwards, raise the rear heel. As you rock backwards, raise the front heel. Forwards and backwards. This is from a set of exercises called the Tai Chi Ruler. Uh, not to be confused with the Tai Chi Ruler where you hold like a, a wooden baton in your hands. I think it's called the Tai Chi Ruler because it was handed down through a royal a family in in China. So you don't have to coordinate your, you don't have to specifically coordinate your breath with this movement here. It will naturally co coordinate with the movement. As you roll forwards, you raise the rear heel. As you roll rock backwards, you ro raise the front toes. Rolling down the middle of the feet. Again, make sure the ribs aren't flaring out. Make sure you're not putting all the pressure onto the lower back. Sink the ribs to fill the lower back. Feel as if you, you can feel as if you're pulling the belly towards the back. You can feel as if you're pulling the perineum ever so slightly up in between the legs, in between the genitals, mainly that hui yin point. You feel as if you're pulling that up ever so slightly. You're not really tensing that area. So you're rocking here like a, like a rocking chair. And keep the pelvic area tilted forward. Connect the sacrum and the sacral -like joint to your lower dante in the area about three fingers below the belly button and inside the, the body. You feel yourself rocking from there. You want to get to the point where you feel like the whole body is moving together. So it's not segmented, just moving together. It is really demanding on the legs, on the buttocks, on your core, which is, which is good as always working to your capabilities. And if you really do have really major back problems here and this is quite, oh, I can't do that. Kind of just bring yourself upright. As upright as you can. And just rock. And say so this incline, this slightly inclined forwards uh, posture, it should keep the spine nice and straight, but it really opens up the Hmong Men point in the lower back. Uh, an acupressure point on the governing meridian. Really helps to open up the point and really helps to facilitate the, the flow of the chi through the two major meridians inside the body, the domain, the runway, the governing, and the conception meridian. You can, you can hear my breath is already getting up a little bit here. Rocking. Rocking, rocking. And then just let it stop. Naturally, and bring yourself to an upright position. Bring yourself up. And you change to the other side. So quite a narrow stance. Turn the other toes out to the side and slide the foot forwards. So the heel is in line with the instep. Again, feet flat on the floor, pelvic area is tilted forwards. And just incline forwards, incline forwards, sit down, then push the tailbone forwards. Sit down to the posture, okay? 
and sink down until your toes or that front foot are slightly obscured so you can't see them in this upright position. Then hands onto the thighs and kind of inclining forwards at the hips. Make sure you're not curving in the lower back, you're not sticking out the chest, not flaring out the rope, and dropping down until the, the fingers again are just above the knees. And, and you can see the toes now that you've inclined forwards. And again, be careful if you don't want to come to the back here. Make sure the lower back isn't curving in, the ribs aren't flaring out. The hips are soft, yin, the way lu, the sacrum area, is yang. And again, just start to rock. As you just rock backwards at the front toes, come up to the ground as you rock forwards, the rear heel comes off the ground. Just rocking, rolling down the middle of the feet. Rolling down the middle of the feet, just rocking. And again, if you're ready, you say, I can't do that, my back, and it will just damage my back. Do it in an upright position. This can even be done in a chair. Uh, no, the next next stage can be done in the chair. But if you can do this incline forwards, keeping the back straight so you're not hunching, the back is still straight, pelvic area is pushed forwards. You can do it in this incline position here, and it's really good for opening up that mung men point and back. Really good for digestion here. Soften the hips, the quad. Did I slide the hand up onto the hip? Slide the hand up onto the hip. This hand onto the hip. He's rocking for the Raising the rear heel when going forwards, raising the front toes when going backwards. And it's starting to sweat here. It's really warm your core, so it warms the whole body up. Rocking. Touchy ruler. You feel as if the neck's tucking against the collar of a shirt, tongue on the roof of the mouth. Rocking. And again, feel as if the whole body is rocking all together as a complete, complete unit, so it's not segmented. You're rocking like a rocking chair. Really demanding on the legs. Really demanding. Okay, just let it start naturally. Bring yourself up. And change to the other side, so quite a narrow stance, about foot length, foot length thing between your feet. Turn your uh, the other toes out to the side, so the, the toes we just started on turn out to the side, side of the foot forward, so the heel is in line with the instep. Again, so you don't have to do the leaning forwards here for the moment. Kind of just sit down. Again, until your knees are obscuring your toes in this upright position. Okay, you're really engaging your core, really. The hips are soft, the way lu, the bottom of the spine is yang. And when we say yin and yang, yang, uh, the very rudimentary understanding of yin and yang is yang is hard and yin is soft. If you look at the Tai Chi symbol, the yin and yang symbol, uh, just called the Tai Chi symbol, when the yang, the white side is at its fullest, there's a little dot of yin in it. When the yin side is at its fullest, there's a little dot of yang in it. So you never have that full 50-50 hard and soft divide. So when yang is at its fullest, you have that little bit of softness in it. When yin is at its softest, you have that little bit of yang in it. Okay? And they have all those degrees in between because the cycle, if you could see it, the circle, if you could see it, would be constantly turning. Okay, so the, the way low is more yang than, y, more than the hips. Okay, this time just bring your arms up in front of your navel. Arms up in front of your navel. You have about, I don't know, 10 inches to a, a foot distance in between your fingers, so 30 centimeters, 300 millimeters. Okay, I just want you to rock forwards. Oh, yeah. Sink down, incline forwards. So again, you get that incline in the back here. Unless you do have problems with that, then you can do it in that upright position. And just drop down forwards here, the, the hands drop down. Okay, and just rock forwards and come backwards. Your hands come up and go forwards. Breathing in and breathing out. No, you don't have to coordinate the breath of this. Just rock it. the shoulders. Uh, for those who, who have done a Tai Chi ball before, it's very much like Tai Chi ball, but without the ball. So you can imagine you're holding on to a, like an energy ball in between your hands. Energy ball, and you're just turning this over, bringing it up towards you, pushing it down away from you. Or you can do it the other way, so down, but I'm going to do it this one. So down, now I'm going to go down. So again, have that feeling you're pushing the tailbone forwards, keeping the arch, make sure you haven't got the arch coming into the lower back. Engaging your core. Okay. We're working together. There's quite a bit of concentration there required for this. You can tell by my My speaking is slowing down. A lot of connectivity here. Actually moving from your core. This really makes this quite a quite, quite a, a navel type exercise. 
and then slowly stop and so the momentum dissipate and so forth. Okay, so bring yourself back to the shoulder width stance. Okay, so, well, a slightly narrower than shoulder width stance. And then I kind of, again, I want you to drop the weight down and I want you to turn the, the other toes out to the side. So you have that 45 degree angle. Slide the foot forward so the heel is in line with the instep. Okay, also we'll, we'll help carry us tilt forwards and just sink down, engaging your core. Make sure the lower back isn't curving in the bum, the low, the low spine isn't curving backwards. Sitting straight down, you're not sticking the chest up. Dropping down, just like squatting down, relaxing the hips. Uh, the, the way Lu is yang, the hips are yin. And again, you want to, if you look down, the toes should be obscured by your knee. Okay, bring your arms up, your hands up to navel height, so you have like a foot distance between the hands, uh, 30 centimeters, 12 inches, 300 millimeters. And again, I want you to start to relax the hips and inclining forwards there. And make sure the lower back doesn't curve in. And the hands to go down ever so slightly. Okay, they go down. And then I kind of want you to sit back and the hands come up. You go forwards, the hands go down. Sit back, the front toes come off the ground, go forwards, the rear heel comes off the ground. Make sure the lower back isn't curving in. And again, if you really have trouble with the lower back here, you say you can't do this inclining forwards, do it in an upright position. And forward and back, you're rolling down the middle of the feet. Relax the shoulders. And again, there's a lot of connectivity going on here. So if that might shut up, look here. You don't have to coordinate the breath with this. I tend to coordinate the breath with pretty much everything I do, or it naturally coordinates with everything I do. Rocking the Tai Chi ruler. Yeah. Whole body moving together, rocking like a rocking chair. If I'm not careful, my, my hips tense up more than my way loop, and they take over and I kind of start to go into kind of elliptical type movement. Go side to side, I shouldn't be doing that. I have kind of an elliptical movement here. You know, like this, with the pelvic area. So you're really demanding on the legs. Really working with the, we've worked a lot on the fascia, the fascia, the connective tissue, the seams in the body, in the previous films. We're really trying to work with that so it's not gross muscular effort. Feel that connectivity, the biotensibility of the body. The elasticity of the, the sinew, the connective tissue with the bones, rather than just gross muscular effort. And you can count the repetitions of the movements you're doing here. I don't tend to count the repetitions I do. I do them until they feel right. Straighten the legs until they're quite straight without locking up the knees. I want you to make your hands into, into these beaks, okay? So that's all the things to the thumbs. Touch the, the, the wrist into the lower back here. Uh, shoulder width stance or thereabouts. Okay, and I just want you to start to rock forward and back. So it's like you've been doing in the last, in the previous uh, movement, the touchy ruler, but the feet are in the shoulder width stance. So again, make sure you're not just kind of sticking the belly out and curving in the lower back or hunching the upper back. Moving from your center. The hips are soft, yin. The way Lu, sacrum, sacral -like joint, coccyx, yang. So more substantial than the hips. One in the middle of the feet. Moving from your core. Just rocking, rolling in the middle of the feet. And just rocking. Try and get the same feeling you just had in the previous, in the previous exercises when you were inclining. So that really energizes your hands. The whole sequence really energizes your hands. Just rub your hands together. So your hands might be warmer than they were when you started. Some of you have, might have really glowing hands. Just rub your hands. Some say this is the chi energy, uh, healing energy. Oh, I don't like to say healing. But yeah, so it's this energy that manifests itself in your hands is has curative properties. So I feel like you're rubbing it in. Rubbing it in. Rubbing it in as hard as is comfortable for you. This is self-massage. Rubbing in as hard as is comfortable. You can feel like you're rubbing in a magic cream here, a magic liniment, magic ointment the shoulders, grab the shoulders and the upper back, shoulders and the upper back. Really be mindful of where you're rubbing, 
So make sure your mind isn't wandering away from what we're doing here. Rub down the inside of the arms three times. Outside of the arms three times. Give the belly a good rub. Rubbing around the belly, rub the belly. Rub the belly one way, the other way. Rub the lower back. Little crease, the buttocks, the thighs, the knees, loving positive energy into your knees, love your knees, the shins and the calves, the ankles if you can get down there, and anywhere you feel need some special attention, give it a bit of a rub. And uh, we can finish there, so uh, yeah, uh, give it a go. Uh, Follow the safety instruction on the back. Really be careful of the lower back in this one, okay? So done correctly, it's really good for the lower back and open up the, the energy gate in the, in the middle of the back there. Uh, done incorrectly, you can put uh, unnecessary pressure onto the lower back there and it can exasperate any uh, back problems you might have. So be careful. Okay, so I'll finish this. So bye for now and I'll see you in the, in the next film. So bye for.